Cool. So who can uh, tell me what they thought, they, a couple things they got from that video? I love, oh, okay. Go for it. Uh, I just love the detachment. Right. Theory. Absolutely. What about it? That you can be involved in a lot of different things, but as long as you're like monitoring how it's making you feel, um, then you can kind of step away for a minute, or you can Absolutely. I, I love, that's a great, great, huge point. Um, you know, a knife can be used to save someone's life in surgery, or it can be used for murder, right? All, it's, it's, the knife itself isn't inherently bad, it's how it's used. Technology can be used for good, or it can be abused. It's not letting it control you. Right, what about yourself? Pretty much the same thing. I think over the years I've learned don't jump into things without thinking it through, or, you know, the detached thing, you know. Yep. A lot of times, I think, as younger people, you just, I want to do that, I'm all in, you know, and then you realize, ooh, this is really not about something I really want to do, and yeah. you don't know how to back out of it. So Absolutely. You kind of approach it slowly, detached, and then find out. Absolutely. No, that's a great point, too. And it can kind of, kind of, over, kind of help us create, not create habits, too. If we become consumed with something, and it becomes to literally decide what we do throughout our day. So what I'm excited to talk to you in this last part uh, of, of today, my, my last part anyway, before you guys go with Megan, is the concept of controlling and managing your emotions. And it's powerful. It really, really is. Because uh, something, this is one of those patterns that I've found throughout life, uh, one of the actual patterns that I've found throughout life and I think is important to understand uh, as I go through this little presentation is I've found that thoughts create. What I mean by that is anything you see out there at all had to first start where? In your mind. In your mind. Had to, had to be a thought. Nothing came without a thought, right? Thoughts create. But the other part of that that I found to be really important is feelings. Feelings attract. So thoughts create, but the feelings is what attracts into your life. This is why affirmations, which Megan's going to talk to you guys more about, or so you can say affirmations so you're blue in the face. If you don't feel it, then it's not going to work as well. This is why gratitude is so powerful. You hear gratitude, grateful all the time. Because if you actually think about the things you're grateful for, you're truly grateful for in your life, you're going to feel good. And that is the fastest way to get that good feeling, is it's through gratitude. So understanding this, as we go through this presentation, keep this in your mind. Your thoughts create and your feelings attract. So one of the first things I want to talk about I want to give, and this is the same presentation I did to that company, I did it to, uh, did it to my employees too, it's five ways that you can help shift your emotions throughout the day. Because if this is true, if thoughts do create and your feelings attract, if you have negative feelings throughout the day, it's going to be very difficult to have an impactful day. In a positive, from a positive standpoint, right? So, you know, nothing's foolproof, nothing's perfect, but these are a couple ways that you can kind of shift. I call this presentation the shift because it's literally shifting your emotions. It's actionable ways to shift your emotions throughout the day. So here are five, and this is kind of a writing exercise. So if you got a pen and paper, this is personal, something for you just to write for yourself. Uh, five ways... to shift your emotions. So one, one, and these are just personal things that you could write for yourself. No one's gonna see this. This is just for you, okay? And this is exactly what I had all my employees do. I've had everyone do this, all right? It's, it's a good tool to use. Write down five things that are going right in your life. And or are you grateful for? Write down five things that are going right in your life. Five things you're grateful for. It can be as simple as a roof over your head. You know where your next meal is coming from. Animal, person, whatever. 
Five things going right in your life. I'm going to go through a couple more of these for you to do. Just take it at your own pace. I also want you to write your favorite memory. Now, this can be just a quick bullet. It doesn't have to be like a, you write out your entire memory. Whatever will help you, if you look at it, you'll remember that memory. It doesn't have to be long. Just something that will help you remember. Favorite memory. The reason why these things are powerful is as you go through your day, do we deal with negative people? Yes. Do we deal with negative situations? Absolutely. And I'm going to talk about a pretty actual way to deal with specifically negative people and specifically negative situations too. But these are just things I have my employees literally, some of them have really adopted it and they have it in their pocket. And if something happens, they'll just pull it out and look at it and they'll be like, oh, that's right. It's, it's just a way for them to shift. Because if your thoughts are creating, if you're focusing on something that's not good or negative, it's not going to create that good feeling, which means if you're probably not going to have a very powerful uh, action and it's going to lead to a low quality result. It all starts in your mind, okay? Favorite memory, three. And this is interesting. Tony Robbins' wife uses this method. So uh, write down something you're looking forward to in the next three to six months. So what she said, what she said was what she uses, because again, we all deal with things that are bring us down or something negative happens or whatever. If she starts to feel down, her way that she has trained her mind to shift out of that is she will think of something coming up in the short term future that she's really looking forward to a trip. Um, some, I don't know, a, a day, whatever. So whatever it is you're looking, something you're personally looking forward to in the next three to six months. She'll think about that and she'll think about what it feels to be partaking in that action and she'll just feel good. It'll pull her out of that negative state. It just works like if she's trained her mind to do that. So write down something you're looking forward to the next three to six months. Next, write down a long-term goal. Again, it's all about being focused. And don't limit yourself on these long-term goals. Do not limit yourself. Constantly have to talk to my employees about this because one of the biggest downfalls sometimes with people isn't that you're own limiting beliefs, it's you buy into other people's limiting beliefs. Just because other people haven't achieved something or someone close to you has it, they think you won't. Long-term goal. Keep that in mind, too, because, you know, life has hills and valleys, right? So when you're on a hill, you have your long-term goal, you can see that. But when you're in a valley, it's a little bit harder to see it, right? Because you're in the valley. That doesn't mean it's not there. It's still there. But keep that in mind. Keep your long-term goal in mind. And this could, this could mean different things to all of you, but whatever your daily commitment is. You know, my company, it's their however many sales they want to get in the day. But whatever your daily, what is your daily commitment? What have you set your intention for in your day? What have you committed to doing? And I, I urge you, you know, again, use this as a tool. Keep the, I, my, a couple of them have really adopted it. And they keep this on them. It's just something that it's saying it's it's staying very self-aware and self-reflective and helping manage emotions when something not too great happens. Yes. Would you recommend using all of these together or one at a time? Because I can see with number three, for example, if you're always looking forward. That could prevent you from being present? That's a really, really good point. So, um, yeah, it definitely could prevent you from being present. That's a good point. I didn't think much about that. So in the moment, if you're, this is, if you're kind of stuck and something negative happens to you and you're trying to pull yourself out of that, there's a couple ways too because there's another method. These are all just tools, right? You could also say with this negative thing that's happening, what can I control? What can I not control? Um, what I have found, though, sometimes when it's something really negative that happens, it's hard to, you can focus on what you can control, but the negative feeling tends to stay. Right. So if you're trying to take it to the next conscious or subconscious level, you shift to focus on only what you can control, shift one more time to think about something that you're looking forward to, to help create that good feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Change gears a little bit. 
it's like a double, double conscious shift, you know, <laughs> coining that term. Um, but yeah, use these, you know? So I wanted to go over that. Those are ways to do it. So five ways that you can help just uh, shift your emotions. So on, in, in the thoughts of five, there's one more uh, set of tools I want to give you that has been pretty instrumental, at least for my employees, on helping help to help deal with anxiety and being overwhelmed. Okay, so it's, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed. It's very easy to feel anxiety, right? So there's a couple other ways you can help shift and get out of that. See, it could be similar to feeling negative, but this is more of an anxiety overwhelmed feeling. Okay, one, And this goes, I kind of spoke about this in the, uh, the, 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 the lecture earlier, but it's that universal thing of you get what you give, right? What you put out there is what you get back. So one way to shift out of anxiety and getting overwhelmed is find a way to put into someone. Find a way to support someone. Find a way to give advice to someone. Reach out to someone. If you can find some way to help somebody else, you literally tap in to that wiring of service within all of us. I know this sounds simple, but it works so well. Like we're always out in the field, right? In our company, we're always out in the field. We're going to businesses, new developments, all that stuff. Move around. Exercise is so powerful. Like one of my mentors, Patrick Shalkovsky in Virginia, he'll literally get out of his car and do like 10 push-ups, 20 push-ups. It sounds crazy, but by doing that, your focus goes completely onto whatever physical thing you're doing, and it'll shift yourself out of that anxiety and that overwhelming feeling. So move around, exercise, yoga, run, whatever, uh, whatever is specific to you. Three, gratitude. Obviously, it kind of ties into that over there. Focus, start thinking about the things that you feel good that you're grateful for. Four, you know, one of our core values in our company is unity. Um, I think it's powerful because we're all in this together. You know, we, we are. We're all in this together. No one has this whole thing figured out. We're all kind of leaning on each other. So uh, I'm a huge proponent of surround yourself with good people. There was a really, really interesting, so one of, the, one of the presentations that I have, it's called um, Achieving Peak Performance, uh, Achieving Mindfulness and Peak Performance in Sales. I also did it for a more broad uh, presentation, but a really interesting study was done that, you know, you hear all the time about toxic people or surrounding yourself with toxic people, right? The issue, there's actually a subconscious issue there. Your mind, we're all, we're all empathy based. We all want to connect with each other. At our core, we're empathic people. We want to connect. So the people you surround yourself most with, your mind's going to create subconscious neuro pathways that are similar to those that you're around. So it's so important to keep yourself around good people, inspiring people, positive people, people that are trying to, you know, do, do, do good for themselves, you know, that kind of stuff. There's some people that are caught, I'm not saying cut them off by any means, and you know, there's this whole um, back and forth on do you cut these people off or not. I'm not really the point of cutting them off. And, well, you know, when you become the kind of person you want to be, when you become someone that, you know, is happy and you're, you're shy, those people kind of make their way out of your life for one reason or another. Like attracts like, right? And then the last thing is just an understanding that, you know, most people that get really overwhelmed is because we tend to think that we have to have everything figured out right now. Like everything. And the reality is that's never gonna happen. You know, if life has this crazy way that when you figure something out and you get to the next level, you get more problems and just different problems. You know, it's okay, it's not a bad thing. There's just new challenges and new problems. So understand you don't have to have everything figured out. So 
So there's really two, the, the way I want to like end this, is there, there's really two ways, there, there's two situations that you'll deal with that could cause a negative thing to add, that, that could cause to shift your emotions negatively, right? So one is dealing with a negative person. And one of the, uh, one of the really interesting, I guess, quotes that I found uh, that really just had me think really deep into it is that people will treat you the way they feel about themselves. So if you think about that, it's pretty deep. I was like, whoa, that really made me think. Um, it's easy for us to take things personally. If someone attacks us, if someone says something negative, if someone you know comes in for whatever reason, but understanding that people will treat you exactly how they feel about themselves, that takes away that personal attack aspect, right? Because and, and that's why when you get when you really start to comprehend that, and we deal with uh, in sales, you deal with negative people a lot sometimes. Um, you you understand that they're just going through something, and you can kind of just say, hey, I hope whatever you're going through, you fix it. You know, so understanding that people will treat you exactly. Have anyone ever heard, uh, read the Four Agreements? I just read it. Acid. What are the Four Agreements? Oh, you can't remember. Oh God. <laughs> so um, it's okay. I, I literally I wrote that just in case I. I've been meaning to write it down. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. So be impeccable with your word, right? Uh, don't make assumptions about anything. Always do your best. And the last one is don't take anything personally. And it's important because, you know, and here's, here's the, here's the quote of why it's important. So you've got, like, the thing, the thing you're looking at doing, right? Let's say, whatever the thing is you're about to do. What are you about to do in your day? That thing. You can either have, you have a thought. You have a thought that's either positive or negative. So if you dig into why it's important to keep your mindset in a pot, you hear, be positive all the time, right? All the time, constantly. Well, dig into why it's actually important to do that. When you have the thing you're about to do, you're about to enact in, you either have to, if you're either going to have a positive or a negative thought. The problem is if you have a negative thought, that leads to a limited belief. That limited belief is going to lead to a LQ, which is a low quality action. Quality action. And that has a better chance of leading to a low quality result. So it, it all starts here though. You can have the same thing, two people with same exact skills, same exact everything, but if you if they take the negative approach, they're just gonna have a better chance of getting a low quality result. And then they fall into the belief that, that whatever thing they're doing, they're not gonna do well at it. Then it creates this belief of they're just not good at this thing. When if you just shift your mindset, you go positive, it literally creates an empowering belief, which will lead to a high quality, higher quality action, which has a better chance of leading to a high quality result. And then, if you see that, we're habitual creatures, what do you think, you know, what we see, we'll believe it. Um, when you have that result, you'll create the belief that you can do the thing well. This is why a lot of people, they get into something, they're, if you already, I've, I've never met a successful pessimistic salesperson. I just, I've never met them. I just I haven't, because it's that mindset, right? If you go with somebody that negative thought, of course you're gonna have that. But it, it, it literally all starts in mindset. It all starts with, do you have a positive outlook or a negative outlook? And then it just continues, it creates a cycle. And the way to get out of that cycle is to be actionable about your mindset and be able to shift your emotions into focusing on the positive. And the, so the last, a, a couple of, uh, one really cool perspective thing I just wanted to throw out there that I heard this morning. Uh, who was it? Gosh. I think it was Rachel Hollis. Rachel Hollis. Yeah, she did a post. It was so cool. And uh, I don't have a lot to say about it, it's just a really cool concept. Is thinking, you know, we always get so worried that we're not where we're supposed to be yet, right? We're, we're, not, we're not there, we're not there, which is all BS. We're all on our own journey, and we're exactly where we're supposed to be. That's the reality. Um, but she says, look where you were three years ago, or five years ago, and look where you are right now. Look how much you've grown, personally, professionally. You are exactly where you need to be. You are doing all the right things. You're on the right path, 100%. It's all about perspective, right? And then um, the last thing I think is an important concept to understand if you have not uh, looked this stuff up yet, you know, dis the epitome of disagreement, 
of people clashing, of being, of arguing why, uh, you know, when it comes to like politics, religion, all that stuff, why there's constant, has you ever heard of the backfire effect? So the backfire effect is this really interesting concept. It's like a deeper level of cognitive dissonance. You ever heard of cognitive dissonance? So basically, if, if uh, myself and Allie grew up with totally different beliefs, completely different beliefs, and I come at her, and she's like, no, I've been told the sky is blue. I'm like, no, the sky is pink. And I'm telling her this, even if, well, let's switch it around, actually, for the sake of the example. If she thinks the sky is pink, and I'm telling her the sky is blue, it does not matter what kind of facts or what you can bring to this person, because she's, your brain will literally, when it's told, when your brain is told information that, conf that conflicts with a, what's considered a core belief of what you believe, your brain will see red, it will see red as if the body's being attacked, okay? This is actually scientifically why people clash and they don't tend to get along uh, why, when, they, when they have differing beliefs. Like, I can bring all the facts in the world, it doesn't matter, people, this is why you see, how many Facebook arguments do you see all the time, right? They're never going to get anywhere. You can bring all the facts in the world uh, about, you know, the sky being blue, but it doesn't matter because your brain is going to see red, and, and no matter what, and it's crazy because the more facts and more stuff you bring, the other person is actually going to get more convinced of themselves. Because what do they do? They look up information that what? Supports their, Supports their own argument, right? Of course, because we don't, right? But the, the, the actual way to get around that, just so everyone, so this is just good to know, if you ever come across someone that, and you want to take the time and emotional effort to try and dissuade someone from what they believe, if you want to go that route, you have to... Have them subconsciously believe that you are the same kind of people. So if I want to convince Allie that the sky is a different color than it is, before I ever bring that up, I'm going to talk about, hey, we grew up, we both, I know, I'm going to find out that we grew up in the same area. I'm going to talk to her about the fact that we both grew up in the same area. I'm going to talk about the fact that we both went to the same college, that we're both in sales. I don't know. We're gonna, I'm going to find some way to relate to her. In her mind, the walls go down. The walls go down. They go down. And then, and now, uh, in that moment, now I have a better chance. It's never going to, it's not meant to 100%, but I have a better chance saying, hey, person that's just like me, look at this interesting information. You know, what do you think about this? But, and a key part of that too, is I have to be open to accepting that I could be wrong. So it goes both ways, right? This is like, like very, this is, this is the epitome of how actual, agreements and compromise could be made if ego and if pride and if all that other stuff was gone away and if we could actually, you know, really take take steps towards that, right? Is if you ever have just with someone try and help like try and show that you're on the same side and then bring up your facts. And that is going to powerfully help uh, the shift of overall emotions in that statement. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. That's just a quick little thing I wanted to do on managing emotions. We are all done here and then um, Take, go ahead and use the bathroom, grab a drink, and then you're going to be with bacon. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.